Hello everyone, thanks for tuning to today's first video, doing JMA Friday for today's first video. As always, we're having a look at the month head blog here with the Japanese CFSB two models. Uh, on this Friday uh, sort of morning when I'm recording it, afternoon when you're going to be uh, watching it. Um, today's second video, we'll have a look at the weather next week, 10 days. We'll also bring you up to date with the latest terms of the stratospheric warming that could be occurring over, the, or will be occurring over North Pole uh, this weekend and into next week as well. And uh, we'll see if there's any sign of any impacts in terms of cold weather from that. But keying it all off is going to be um, JMA Friday, our month head look head with the Japanese and CFSV tomorrow. So we'll begin with the JMA uh, and then we'll have a look at CFSV2. We'll compare the two and uh, see what they are showing. It's going to take us into March, so we're going to be early part of the spring now, uh, can you believe, with uh, this update. Um, Meteorological spring, anyway. I mean, it's uh, sort of questionable in terms of the, the weather itself because it doesn't stick to define uh, boundaries and criteria. It's just useful to have defined periods uh, for the seasons when we come to uh, divvy up the numbers. Uh, and winter is sort of 1st of December to 28th or 29th of February. And then spring is officially classed as the 1st of March to the uh, 31st of May. Um, but uh, it's all very uh, questionable. Winter weather can continue well into uh, March, as we saw in 2013, when we had our coldest March since about 1883. Uh, and there was lots and lots of snow uh, and ice as well. Conversely, spring can start as early as uh, February, even January um, sometimes. So every year is different and individual. But we have these uh, defined periods um, which are useful uh, for sort of uh, sorting out the uh, seasonal numbers. So this will take us into official spring Anyway, even if the weather um, might still be. But on the cold side, we'll have a look and see what the uh, long range models are showing uh, for the next month. We're going to begin with the JMA. So these are the 500 millibar height anomalies broken down into weekly periods um, from the pole view down. So this is the uh, North Pole of the Northern Hemisphere up here, and then the middle latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere are uh, round there. The British Isles, actually, it's very hard to make out on this chart because the colour is very intense, but I think the British Isles is just around there uh, somewhere. So, this is the uh, weekly, uh, week one uh, 500 millibar height on me, taking us from today, the 9th, through to the 16th of uh, February. So, below average heights indicated by um, blue colours, that's low pressure, and yellow, orange, red, above average heights, is high pressure. So the JMA is placing this big trough of below average heights uh, over and to the west, northwest of the UK, with the jet stream going rather like that. Looks very unsettled and placed on the cold side of the jet stream as well. It's rather Atlantic driven. We do have this area of above average heights uh, down to our south just here. So it is all rather westerly, but we're on the cold side of the jet stream. And within that trough of low pressure, there is the chance of uh, wintry precipitation as well, because we're on the cold side of the jet, so it would be quite cold. Um, and maybe some wintry conditions at times, but also uh, very unsettled for week one to start us off. Uh, week two takes us from the 16th through to the 23rd of February. And what's happening here is that we're building this ridge uh, to our north. So this is proper northern blocking setting up, possibly in response to that uh, sudden stratospheric warming that we've been talking about uh, just recently. Although you can't necessarily say that one thing is directly causing another uh, when it comes to the weather. It might be coincidence. But uh, certainly signs there that we've got Northern Blocking setting up, which pushes this trough over and to the south of the UK. So we're still on the cold side of the jet here, but we're probably pulling down the air maybe from the northeast, maybe even uh, from the east, actually. So that could be really quite a cold and uh, wintry spell that's setting up there from the uh, 16th to the 23rd. And maybe the greatest risk of snow with that would be in southern parts of the country, closer to this uh, trough of low pressure. And then we go through to week three and four, which takes us from the 23rd of February through to the 9th of March. And there's no real change uh, with this. We've still got the above average heights being signalled to our north and also centering 
around Greenland and Newfoundland. Blairbridge Heights with this trough over and to the south and the east of the UK means we're still pulling the air in from the east or the north. So it's still likely to be cold. So cold conditions and maybe wintry conditions at times stretching out even into the start of March uh, with this um, update of, JMA, uh, of the JMA model uh, today. So as I said at the beginning of the video, even though we're going into the start of the spring there, uh, in terms of the numbers, in terms of um, the defined seasons, wintry weather would very much be continuing, I would have thought, uh, with that one. Bear in mind, it is a two-weekly anomaly, so uh, you can get something like um, a very strong cold block signal for week three, and then week four might revert to something milder and more unsettled. But overall, the JMA is another cold update um, this week. It's consistently going for this week after week at the moment, these cold uh, conditions through the rest of February and into March as well. Let's have a look at the uh, tropical and mean latitude view and see what the temperature and precipitation anomalies are doing uh, with the JMA model. So on this view, the British Isles is in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it, just up there. Reminder of the um, 500 millibar height anomaly for uh, week one, which is the 9th through to 16th, of February with the Blairbridge Heights through the country, very unsettled signal, but also placing us on the cold side of the jet stream. So quite cold, but also unsettled uh, in the week ahead. Temperature anomalies, therefore, are coming out colder than average with the JMA uh, this morning for the coming week, as it is for most parts of uh, Europe as well. And if we have a look at the precipitation anomaly, you will not be surprised to know that is above average. So... Um, that's just got that deep trough, of course, over the UK and uh, also centering just to our south. So what's happening there is that uh, it's cold and it's unsettled uh, for the week ahead. We go through to uh, week two, which takes us from the 16th through to the 23rd of February. Again, placing the Blurbridge Heights to our south. Uh, we can't see the North Pole view, but we already had a look at that. We know there's blocking to our north. So again, it looks like it's probably going to be quite a cold week. Temperature anomalies are coming out colder than average from the 16th to 23rd of uh, February. Precipitation anomalies, they are coming out not as unsettled. It's a bit drier than average actually up in the north. It's a little bit wetter than average down in the south. So it does turn a bit drier there, but it's still cold and there would be definitely wintry potential. And then week three and four, keep it all going. This is the 23rd of February through to the 9th of March. When again, we place the below average heights over and to the south of the UK. We've got above average heights to our west. Also, again, you can't see the Arctic view, but you know we've got high pressure up there to our north. Precipitation anomalies, a little bit um, more unsettled, actually, in, uh, in this two-week period at the end of February and into the beginning of March. And temperature anomalies remain colder than average as well. So a really cold time of it being signalled here by the JMA with a consistently above average temperature anomaly from start to uh, finish. We would definitely be looking at the chance of wintry conditions in the week ahead with that. Uh, CFSV2, uh, next, let's compare the two models. So, again, these are 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. The first week period takes us from the 9th through to the 15th of February identical really to what the JMA is showing with this area of below average heights um, to the uh, west and northwest of the British Isles and over the UK which places us on the cold side of the jet stream we do something like that with the jet we've got a ridge up here and also out there uh, but the main thing is that it's very unsettled and we place on the cold side of the jet so it's cool and unsettled with some wintry potential probably in the week ahead. Uh, week 2, which is the 16th to the 22nd of February, looks like that, but a trough of below average heights centre just over the top of the country, still that above average heights area through the mid-Atlantic, and also up to our north, so very little change here either, still being placed on the cold side of the jet stream, and still looking very unsettled as well. Uh, week uh, 3, which is the 23rd of February, through to the 1st of March. Again, very similar to what the JMA is showing. We take this trough of blur, which heights to our south. We build the blocking signal up to the north. That's a proper northern blocking feature. And so we're on the cold side of a jet. We're jet doing something like that. Uh, you would expect some very 
uh, cold and uh, times maybe wintry conditions be coming in with that. The wind could well be coming in from a northeast or maybe even easterly direction and then we keep this abnormally blocked uh, sort of pattern going to week four which is the second to the 8th of March, very delayed start for spring, if this is right with above average heights uh, through the Atlantic and going up to Greenland and, and extending back into the Arctic, below average heights to our south-southwest and so the upshot is that we would still be bringing the flow and the jet stream to our south, we'd still be bringing in that cold east or uh, northeasterly flow there so cold and wintry uh, even into the start of March. Temperature anomalies look like this. The coming week, the night of 15th of February, is colder than average of the UK and for much of Europe as well. Uh, week two, it's not quite as cold this week, closer to average, but still generally a little bit on the below average side from the 16th to the 22nd of uh, February. Uh, then actually it turns colder again in week three, which is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March, very substantially cold and average. The anomaly is around two to two and a half degrees uh, below average. And week four rounds it all off, the 2nd to the 8th of March, that one is also coming out quite substantially colder than average uh, for the UK and also for Ireland as well. So we've got both of these models in agreement that we're in for really quite a cold uh, month. The precipitation anomalies, finally, this takes us from the 9th to the 15th of February, coming out substantially above average with precipitation. So it's going to be quite a wet uh, week ahead. And as it's cold and average, there will be a little bit of wintry potential in there too. Uh, week two um, precipitation anomalies from the 16th to 22nd of February. Still a little bit on the above average side, but a little bit less so than uh, week one. So everything sort of calms down a bit that week, the 16th, 22nd of February, the third week of February then. Um, it's all calming down slightly. It's a little bit drier, a little bit less cold, but still overall unsettled and chilly. Um, then we go through to uh, week three, which is the 23rd of February to the 1st of March, is when the temperature goes colder uh, again. And uh, actually we're going a little bit more towards the drier side of things, particularly to the north. And that's because we're building up that northern blocking feature, of course, which is blocking off the Atlantic. Remember, though, any precipitation that does fall there, I would have thought it's likely to be primarily sleet or snow. And then week uh, four, which is the 2nd to the 8th of March, that also comes out average, maybe even for the north, things to get being a little, a little bit drier than average. So we've got pretty good agreement here between these two models. It looks like we're in for a cold or maybe even very cold time of it over the uh, coming uh, coming month. With both of these models signalling substantially colder than average temperature anomalies, pretty much from start to uh, finish. Now I doubt every single day in the next month will be colder than average. You will get periods where it turns a little bit milder. But the general theme of Jam A Friday this week, as it has been for the last few weeks actually, is for... Um, temperature anomalies to be staying really quite cold for the rest of February anyway and possibly even continuing into uh, March. Terms of precipitation it also looks unsettled so there is wintry potential in there as well. If anything we might see a slight seem to be shifting a um, little bit drier as we get towards the final stages of February and into March uh, but at that point of course it would be really quite cold so any precipitation at that point, is likely to be uh, sleet or snow. But, yeah, really, um, really wintry sort of update again this week from uh, JMA Friday. How much influence the uh, developments in the stratosphere are having on this, I think, is um, quite uncertain. But, because uh, you can never say that um, one thing is directly causing or affecting another when it comes to the weather and the climate. But we do know that when we get these sudden stratospheric warmings, uh, you tend to increase increase the blocking signal uh, a few weeks down the road. So um, it may be even into further into March, we might keep these quite cold conditions going for some time. We'll have to wait and see about that. 
Ah, so that's Jam A Friday uh, for you uh, this week. We'll do it all again next week. Now, there's just a snapshot of these long-range models, how they're looking today. They might look very different this time uh, next week. Uh, later on today, we'll have a video detailing what is happening in the stratosphere. Also, have a look at weather next week, 10 days, all of that kind of thing. So come back for that this afternoon. But uh, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.